So if you have if you don't know what I'm talking about, then please look at the videos on inheritance and on private and public access. Um, okay, so we are creating a project where we have a simple shape. This the shape is not the one that I had in the other videos. This is a very simplified version. I have a rectangle with public variables side A and side B with a method called set sides that sets side one and side two and it changes the area variable which comes from shape. And then I have a test class, right? So if I compile all this, it'll compile and then if I run it, it all runs and it says shape that, that area equals three. And then if I do s.getArea, which is the shapes get area method, I will get the number three. Rectangle R is a new rectangle. I'm going to set the side 1, the side 2, and then I'm going to set the area to something that is not really 3 times 3. It's something, anything I want, right? Because I have access to it. I'll say r.getArea, rectangle.getArea, and then it's going to print 75, regardless of the sides. Now, we saw that one way to... Um, to change the sides, right, to... to uh, to limit the access that this test program has over the side, side A and side B, is to declare those variables private. So if I declare them private here, and private here, all right, and I save this, when I recompile test shapes, I'm going to get an error. It's going to say that side A and side B both have private access. So my only chance of changing the sides of a rectangle will be to call r dot set sides 10 by 10 okay now this will compile and remember the set sides method here sets both sides now they're private nobody else can access them and it sets them to side a times side b so let's run this oh it still says 75 why would that be well because i'm still i still have access to the area variable so one solution you might think would be to say create create a private here, right? But in that case, in that case, um, that is not going to work because if I if I make it private in the shape, then the rectangle won't be able to see it. Okay, so if I to try to compile this whole thing again, see the rectangle now. The uh, well, first I cannot see it here. But then if I try to compile the rectangle as well, that's not going to see it either. It says area is private. So how do I get around this? Well, I could create getters and setters for area, but I could do one other thing, right? And I will, I will show you what that is in a second. But for, before I get there, okay, one, one thing that I could do is to give, um, is to give it, you know, I'll give it public access again. Okay, now, but remember, the problem is that we do not want our variable to, um, to be accessed directly by test shape. Okay, if I don't put anything here, which you have seen in the previous videos where I just declare the variables, okay, I can compile this and test shapes can compile and everything will compile and I will still get 75 as an output. Because if I don't put any modifiers next to double area, anything, any class in this directory is able to see the area variable. Any of these classes here in this directory is able to see the area variable. Okay, that is the the um, directory uh, modifier. Anyone in the directory can see this. Now, there's one other type uh, of of, uh, of modifier that I can put there that will only allow subclasses to see this variable but not classes that are external, that are not subclasses of shape. And that keyword is the protected. There's a caveat for this though. Anyone in this directory can see a protected variable. Okay, so if I say protected, that's not going to have any effect here I can still compile this and I can still run it and I can still put 75. But the way we make it work is by uh, saving these classes into packages. So remember, we have private, nobody else but the class can see it. We have public, everyone can see it. We have package modifier, I mean uh, directory modifiers, which means anyone in that folder can see it. 
and we have the protected modifier which says anyone in that folder can see it plus all other subclasses. Now, how does this work? How can we make this, how can we fix this little problem that we have here? The solution for this is packages, okay? And I'm going to talk about this right away. Let me just uh, start over. So I'm going to come here. Now I don't have any classes. These files actually are in sort of uh, limbo, but I'm going to do something with them. I'm going to organize them in directories or packages. And the way I do that is I put this, the first line of the class will say package, and then let's say that uh, this will be in a directory called, uh, this is my project, so I'll call it my or shape project, shape project, and then underneath I'm going to have all the classes that have to do with shapes under a shape package, okay? Look what happens when I save it. Your editor might do something different, okay? Oops, look what happens when I save as, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, one second. Look what happens when I do save as. It says shape.java, I'll go save. And jgrasp in this case, which is what I'm using right now, says, uh, it's basically saying, hey, your class says that you're in a package, but saving it in this directory will not respect the shape proj.shape directory structure. Do you want to save it as shape proj shape shape java? Do you want to save it in that directory? I'm going to say yes. Okay. So now I've created a directory shape project. Under it there's a shape directory. Again, corresponds to shape project, then there's a shape directory, and under this there's the shape my shape.java file. Now I'm going to save my rectangle in the same package, right? Or in a different package. So I'm going to save everything that has to do with a rectangle in a package called shape uh, proj dot rect. Okay. So I will go save as, and I'll just say yes. Whoops. I'm sorry. I should say proj. Okay. See that, that I didn't have the same directory. I have to have the exact same uh, package so that it's saved in the same place and not everything in a different class, right? So save it, yes. I'm going to do something really um, um, okay. Now, but then my test shapes, I'm going to save it in a different package, in a package uh, destined only for tests. So save as. Whoops. So I'm going to say that this thing is going to go into a package called shapeproj.tests. I did remove the, the, the other, uh, other missing bad directory. Okay. So I'm going to save this class and it's going to ask me to save it there. So I save it. So I have shape projects test, shape projects rectangle, and shape projects.shape. If I go my I have my three directories under under each of these directories I do have the corresponding class. In test I have the test shapes and in rect I have the rectangle. Now, my project now is much more organized because I can have ton not necessarily one one class doesn't necessarily go into one package. It just happened to be so, but classes that that go together should go in the same package and classes that say test that should go in a different package and so on and so on. The 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 good thing about that is organization. A big project can have hundreds of classes, and organizing them in packages might be the solution to uh, insanity, and also to a bunch of other um, things. So that is what packages do. Now, in order for me, for the test shapes, to be able to see the shape and the rectangle, because these two classes are not in the same package, basically they're not in the same directory, I need to import them. So I will say import shape approach dot shape dot shape. So I will import the shape class from this package. Remember that's where the package will put it. And I can say also import shape approach dot rectangle. Okay, that's the way this program will get to see these classes. Now it can use them. Okay, and there's one more detail here. Now my rectangle was extending shape, 
I need to tell where I need to tell it where shape is because it's not in the same package. So I need to say import any class that I want to bring into that's not in this directory. I need to import even if I'm extending it. So import shape approach dot shape dot shape. Now, when I said extend shape, it knows where the class shape lives, right? So it can bring it. So let's compile this whole thing. Now we have a problem, right? In shape, I had said that the area was protected, okay? Meaning only classes in this directory and subclasses of shape can access it. So rectangle here, that area, this is fine. Rectangle can use the area variable directly because it inherits from shape and the area variable is protected. Test shapes, however, cannot just say this or this because the variable is protected, meaning only itself, subclasses, and classes in the same directories as the, the shape class in this case can access it. Test is in a different package in a different directory. It cannot access the area variable. Therefore, <clears throat> I have no way to set the area in the shape and this line I have to get rid of because I have no access to that area variable so I'll compile this and uh, run it and now I'll get the right area see set side sets the size of 10 by 10 rectangle and the area here is 100 and I cannot modify that area variable again this is very um, it's commonly used when you're subclassing and you want to give access to the area variable to a subclass because you know that they're not good, they don't mean you know ill so you give access to all the subclasses of shape to access the area variable directly okay but any other class that is not a subclass of shape will not have access to this unless of course it is in the same directory as shape okay so we have seen the three the three uh main kinds of, um, of modifiers for variables, I mean the, all the main modifiers for variables. Private, private, which is only the class. We have seen public, which is everyone. We have seen directory, which is uh, no words before the variable. That is only for classes inside that directory. And then we've seen protected, which is directory plus subclasses. Okay? Those are the kinds of uh, modifiers that we can have next to a variable. And I have to say a method as well. You can have private methods, public method, protected methods. Okay? Um, that concludes this lesson. Stay tuned.